This is the Focus on Parliament show on Civic Space TV brought to you by the Center for Constitutional Governance. I am Isaac Kwagala, your host. The rumblings in the nascent opposition political party, the National Unity Platform, continue to threaten its internal cohesion. With the party and its representative to the Parliamentary Commission, the former leader of the opposition, the Right Honorable Matthias Impung, reading from different scripts, issues have been further compounded by the intervention of the Right Honorable Speaker, Anit Among, who has intervened on the side of Honorable Mpunga by reinforcing his position as a commissioner to the Parliamentary Commission. Now, on this program, we examine the implications of this, the responses of the different players involved in this matter, and what it really means for the health of the national unity platform and the general opposition politics in the country. Viewers, you are most welcome to the program. I now have the pleasure and the honor to introduce my panelists to you, starting from my extreme right is Mr. Sam Ivanda Mugabe, a senior journalist and also the president of the Uganda Parliamentary Press Association. You're most welcome to the program, Sam. Uh, thank you, Isa. Good morning, good morning, our viewers. Happy to be part of the panel this morning, and I hope uh, we shall be able to uh, deliver what we think and submit what we think have been observing the whole week, especially this program of Focus on par Parliament. Thank you, Sam, for joining us. Next to Sam is the only lady on the show, Sayun Helen, who is the Vice President of the Uganda Young Democrats, which is a youth league of the Democratic Party. Helen, you're most welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Isaac, and uh, thank you for hosting us on this uh, Friday, on this uh, Saturday, you know, we're heading for Easter, so it is uh, imperative that we give as we dive into Easter, we, we, we have these discussions and then the birth of Christ comes and maybe cleanses us as politicians. <laughs> we are not yet. <laughs> are you soiled? <laughs> you a politician yourself. What is happening in the media really indicates that there is something fishy within politics. So it, it really, I believe that this Easter will not leave us the same. Oh. Yes. Uh, next mm -hmm. to Helen is the gentleman, Mr. Joseph Tahinduka, who is a policy analyst working with Parliament Watch. You're most welcome, Joseph. Say hello to the viewers. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Isaac. And, and to our viewers, yes, uh, fr from the days of Jesus, uh, there has been a lot of intrigue around fighting corruption. Jesus himself was crucified for, for corruption. And uh, we see Uganda going through a similar political drama and Let's see how the conversation goes. And who is the Jesus? Who is the Judas? Who is the protagonist? Who is the antagonist? We shall see. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Helen, let me start with you, since you are the politician mm -hmm. on the set. Uh, overnight, news broke out that the Honorable Robert Chagulan, the president of the National Unity Platform, had suspended his vice president for the Buganda region and the immediate former leader of the opposition and the current uh, representative of the National Unity Platform on the Parliamentary Commission mm -hmm. over <coughs> what he terms as his uh, participation in corrupt practices in Parliament. I want to understand, is this a moment of rapture for the National Unity Platform? Are we witnessing a radical shift uh, in the party going forward? What does this mean for the opposition politics in the country? And what is happening in NUP is, if that is malaria, then that is fever. <laughs> you know, malaria starts with fever. And the earlier you treat it, the better. If you, if you wait for the other symptoms and the signs to come up, then it becomes very problematic. Uh, well, as I believe that that was uh, quite... I believe that what is happening in, in, in NUP is really quite unfortunate because those are the issues that we as Democratic Party believe that have, should have been settled first within the interiors of a party. 
uh, first we, we start with the writing that came up first even without a signature that was uh, the saying that Mafikaias had actually confessed to have partaken of the 500 million and confessed that that was corruption. And then Mafikaias came and said he did not actually do that. So we believe we start from that very part where I believe that that should have been first managed from the political party. Because there are a lot of processes that can be questioned and, 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 and we are looking at the fact that what did the, the party organs uh, decide? Because when Matthias comes and says that he's not sure of the neck, neck did not see it, uh, that he, in his letter he, he quotes and says that was a family issue, uh, the, the party is led by the family. But well, we do not believe that wrong makes right, wrong, wrong, two wrongs don't make right. The two sides are all wrong. And we believe that a political party must have processes on how it deals with its party members. Every political party, we assume that it, for example, has a disciplinary committee. Was Matthias referred to that? Because NEC at the same time may not form a disciplinary committee. Instead, we believe that NEC should have maybe uh, put Matthias to a disciplinary committee and, and it should have been really a further process. But when you say that the meeting sat on Tuesday, on Wednesday morning you're releasing a, a letter on a leader, we sometimes, some processes, you have to have thought loud on them, and sleeping loud on some matters requires sleeping over them. We don't know whether he was given that benefit of doubt to say that maybe can we sleep over this issue and give it a week within ourselves and say we can sort it out. It was just a rupture all over. But we are looking at that rupture. It's all only not going to even affect uh, uh, any people, per se. It's a problem that is going to affect all of us that are in multi-party dispensation. When you look at uh, him being asked to resign as a parliamentary commission and the rules of the procedures, uh, they, are to, they, they have already protected him. We expected that, of course we, accept, uh, we expect, and we know that they took part in forming those, those parliamentary procedures. They should have even amended that because it, it is already an, it's, it's already a conflict between the party and the parliamentary procedures. We all believe that when someone has the powers to appoint you, then they should have the powers maybe to, to pull you back. But the problem comes in here that now uh, Matthias is not serving NUP. When you've already se been sent as a commissioner, you're no longer serving NUP per se. Mm -hmm. You're just mm -hmm. representing. And you're just representing NUP as just a portion of the, pre of the presentation that you're doing. Because first we start that... A parliamentary commissioner is representing all, all, all political parties per se that are within the parliament. So when, they, when, you wrote, when you write and you want to, to withdraw him, there are processes. Maybe they should have pursued those. But that after failing and then you, you, you are now going to withdraw him as a president of the central, we, we, we may think that that is just a mere playing of politics and witch hunt. Because now the problem is within him as a commissioner, not, a, not him as a as a president of the region. Mm. So, so for me, I believe that uh, there were better ways that this should have been sorted. I believe that if they had sat together as a political party within themselves, and, and, and for us, DP, we are actually watching, because these things, we've been telling people that the conflicts, <laughs> that the conflicts <laughs> that are within the political parties, <laughs> when they are laughing at us, we tell them, gacha, lima baga. For us, gacha, it's going to reach everywhere. So for us, we are really keenly watching. So it should not have set the president. We did not set the president. Uh -huh. Actually, we sent, the, when, by the time those people joined the NUP, they were okay. For us, in our side, we did not have issues of corruption. It seems the orientation was the other side. So for us, we are saying that these are issues that they should have sat as a political party, talked about, and, and, uh, and handled within themselves minus reaching this level that they are at. Because the level that they are at may affect the political party as a whole. Of course, people may look at it as a small issue, but people who want to reason and dig deeper into issues will see that there is a very big problem within the leadership of NUP and within even Matthias himself. But of, of which the biggest problem could be within the leadership of the party. Mm. Yes. Joseph, uh, as a policy analyst, 
working with Parliament Watch, I know you are keenly following the events in Parliament and also by extension the National Unity Platform. Uh, what's your assessment of the situation, uh, both in the party but also strongly interconnected with uh, the going zone in Parliament? Overnight, uh, there was a surprise communication from the office of the president of the party suspending the regional deputy president for Uganda region, who also doubles as a parliamentary commissioner, the right honorable Matthias Simpunga. Uh, briefly, before we even discuss the response of the honorable Mpunga and the speaker, what do you make of that? Um, like three theories, really. The first is that if one day a man and a woman in a home start fighting, it can easily be seen as a one-off event if you do not see it from a wider lens. It could have stemmed from the man having a lot of expectations of the woman or the woman having a lot of expectations. It could be com uh, uh, f false promises that piled up. And as a result, that tension kept growing into the air. And all those disagreements that are then not solved, all of a sudden they become like a volcanic eruption of sorts. And like uh, uh, Honorable Sayuni said, I, I think that the symptoms that we see in, in every political party, even if we just don't single out the NUP, is that there's generally a culture of not knowing how to disagree well within the country. More often than not, when disagreement happens within any political party, People are quick to opt for public debate about it without uh, internally harnessing the processes that deal with these issues. So the failure of our democracy, our multi-party democracy, to have strong political institutions which can have mechanisms of dealing with differences that emerge from the inside has rendered us uh, a leadership system that cannot call itself a democracy because we do not have strong political parties, which essentially means that we are in another system and we perhaps need to get a name for it. The second is that I think it's, it's very important to understand the very nature of politics from the time of Jesus or of uh, Prophet Muhammad. The very nature of politics is that politicians have interests. And in some cases, they use human beings and seasons as a means to, and to score political ends. And this, that's why there's like a political theory which is saying that uh, the National Ninja Platform is trying to posture itself as the leading political party against corruption. And that's why even when there is like the option of sitting down with Honorable Mpuga and solving the issue internally as they ordinarily would, that would reduce their idiosyncratic credit so credibility points with, as a force against a state which has been branded corrupt by most political actors. So th that's like the second political theory that th the national unity platform, it has a lot to lose if it shows the option we are talking about. Given that the very nature of politicians and political institutions is that interests go beyond people it's a bit different in other institutions where people come before interests. The very nature of that is that then they are pushing for making sure they protect the brand of the national unity platform. Are they achieving it? I broadly think that uh, 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 they are posturing to achieve it. And of course, we are seeing a lot of sentiment even from other political actors trying to highlight Noop as one that is not particularly clean, that they are not sent in under themselves, but the idea is that that's what they are posturing. So in that, that makes Mponga the scapegoat? Yes, and, 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 yes, yes, and, and that I takes me to the third political theory. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a political theory. If then that, the second political theory that they're using Mponga as a scapegoat is real, that then takes me again to her, but I'll just have a bit of a rejoinder, which is that, I, and, and if you watched uh, 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 the Katichiro's uh, uh, 
remarks mm. to, to the new people who had gone to, to, to Mengo, mm. he, he was quite clear that, that, the, that they are handling the issue immaturely and, and, and not treating human beings as, as the end in, end in themselves and using them as a means to score political points. If that is happening, then I think we, we, we need to be very uh, we need to question the political principles of, of, of the national unity platform that they can sacrifice uh, their own on 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 to, to just score political points even without let's say legitimate perspectives as we will see from the conversation which is just happening and, and I think that should happen and we've seen on very many political shows uh, representatives of other political parties saying that. I think that the leadership of the National Unity Platform uh, needed to uh, tell us that why is it that in 2022 they received the information and they did not take that very same action, that they waited for the Uganda Parliament exhibition to then take this drastic action. If it's true they stood for corruption, then the most, uh, the, the, the most possible outcome would have been if they received the information, as the observer indicated. Then, from the very word go, they should have done all these actions but if they have waited for two years and at an opportune time when the Uganda parliament exhibition is happening then it means that um, they are trying to just exploit the political season those are the three uh, political theories that, that that perhaps I have on that issue mm. yes let me bring in Sam Sam as a journalist you head a public watchdog in parliament a lot has been going on in parliament uh, with regards to issues of accountability and also uh, how you know the politics is broadly managed there. Some point to questions uh, regarding abuse of office uh, uh, and also issues to do with nepotism, whatnot. But before we discuss the merits of the responses by the Honorable Mpuga and also the Speaker, I just want to pick your brief comments on the action by the party president of NOP to suspend his deputy for the Uganda region. What are the practical implications of this for the uh, opposition political party, mm. that is NOP? Uh, okay, Th thank you, Isaac. I, w when my sister had a sub meeting, she said, as DP, they are watching what is happening in NOP. I, I don't want to say I got shocked, but mm -hmm. I think that's what they're supposed to do as an opposition political party. Because they're supposed to see what the main opposition political party is doing and to assess and see uh, what they're doing best and then what they need to change or to improve. So they're supposed to check as the, one of the opposition political party. Uh, the only challenge with politicians in Uganda is that they think as long as you are in opposition, even if it's a small political party, people think you're only supposed to check the government. No. Even if you are supposed to, uh, to check the government, but you're also supposed to check the main opposition political party because it's the one that's leading uh, these small parties in the parliament. Because when they're choosing leaders uh, to lead the opposition in the parliament, it's the main opposition political party that was given the mandate, the powers, to choose those leaders. And I think it's one of the causes of some of the conflicts that we are seeing in parliament and also in political parties. And uh, I thought when Honorable Segona was uh, had, had been given leave of parliament in the 10th parliament to go and draft a bill, a private member's bill, for the administration of parliament Amendment B that was 2017, uh, I think, 17 or 18. Mm. It was supposed to make some amendments to, the, to this act. Mm. And these are some of the issues that we are going to be addressed. Why? Uh, Segona and the group, they were NDP. Mm -hmm. And they, they felt FDC was not giving them the opportunity also to serve mm. in parliament was not giving them the just position they expected. And for so long, they thought that lost hope. But I know God provides hope where there's no hope. Mm. And uh, I saw when Nup came, mm. the majority of Ugandans gave them the opportunity to be the main leading opposition in parliament. 
and that's where you have seen them. These differences have been happening. Whenever, even FDC member, whenever there were change of leadership, differences could arise. You saw what happened when Nandala was uh, being relieved as the leader of the opposition. When Wafulogutu came in, you saw what happened. When uh, Winnie Kiza came in, you saw what happened when they were changing her because of the differences they had and when they were bringing in Beta Olochan. And when they brought in Beta Olochan, that's when the second one said, no, I think we need to amend uh, this act, the one for the Administration of Parliament Act. So, uh, we need to establish the origin of all these differences. That's the most important thing. Because starting from where the Chagulain, the president of NOPU is coming from, and writing the letter and so on, uh, th those could be having an origin. People need to understand that. Mm. Because when I just start from where Chagulain wrote, then I'll be starting on the top, what almost on that, the breeze. What could that potentially be? Th that's why I'm giving you the origin. Mm. Because we need to know the origin of all these differences. One, when Nimpuga was appointed the lead of opposition in parliament, that was 2021. Uh, mm. I think there are some people in the national uh, unity platform that, that were not happy. Within Uganda and even outside Uganda. But majority of the people who are not happy are from Uganda. I don't know why. I don't want to say speculate on that. And members of and the, NOP? Are they members of They are members of NOP, by the mm, way. Mm. But you are members of NOP. Mm. Because the, even some of these members expected they were going to be the ones to be appointed. I remember there was uh, a battle behind the curtains that those who were saying, I think, Nambesha, because Nambesha was from outside of Uganda, could have been appointed to be the leader of the opposition. And that those who thought that because they, for them they are from Uganda, they thought they were supposed to be appointed, not in Pug. And the members of parliament, those who say the experienced legislators. So they thought they would be given the opportunity to serve in this position of the leader of government, a uh, leader of opposition parliament. But the opportunity was given to Pug. And there are those who thought, Nambeshe coming from eastern Uganda, given the opportunity, would make sure the public does not believe that national unity platform is a party for Uganda. That was an argument among us, uh, a section of the uh, a section of some people. Now, when Mpuga was appointed, there's been uh, these conflicts have been there by now. Clandestine conflicts have been there, and Mpuga, on several occasions, has been coming out to say that the people within NOP are fighting you on several platforms, has been coming out. And remember, even when a certain section of uh, the so-called uh, foot soldiers started attacking Impuga on social media, the party was quiet. Mm. And Impuga questioned why the party is quiet when some members of NOP were attacking him as the leader of, uh, of, of the opposition. Mm. The even members of parliament had even stopped going to the NOP headquarters. One, I can tell you, one of the MPs that I cannot discuss here had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him and told me he would not waste his time to go back to the headquarters. By that time, the headquarters were come out and he said, whenever I go there, they don't treat us as members of parliament. They may, you know, sometimes when you are given, when gives, God gives you an opportunity, and you're a leader. Leaders need to be respected. Yeah, but sure. for them, they're saying they're not being respected. They ever go to the, to the headquarters, party headquarters. Perhaps it was a question for their uh, lack of demonstration of strong no, faith no, or loyalty no. to the party. No, 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 no. They said they used to go. That's what, the, 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 that's the, 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 the argument they were giving me. Whenever they could go to, for these activities and all that, are, that were being organized at the party headquarters, they were not happy the way they were being treated. You know, member of parliament being pressed, uh, given a seat behind with the full soldiers, and uh, you'd see the full soldiers around now occupying the front what? seats. It, it doesn't go well. Because this person you are putting behind is representing people. Thousands of people trusted 
and that person treats them in the 11th parliament. So I thought it was a weakness on the side of the leadership of no to see all this and to address it uh, in time. You know I'm a graduate of peace and common studies. And like he, my sister said, whenever conflicts arise, how are these conflicts being solved? There are different methods of addressing these conflicts. Traditionally, we had our way of solving conflicts. And this modern way also have modern ways of solving conflicts. That those that believe that solving conflicts have to be by force, that I'll go box uh, Isaac and push him away. That those that believe that when I have a conflict with Isaac, I'll go blackmail him and then it will be the end of him. So people will not trust him. So now, this is the conflict we are seeing right now. That the, the conflict in Nope right now is all about blackmail. That those who think they will blackmail on Poga and then uh, vice versa. So they, I think you are seeing. Because when they say Mpoga is corrupt, now the other side is also saying Chagulanyi supports homosexuality. I, mm -hmm. I think we're seeing all that uh, blackmail. Mm -hmm. So is that the way to go? You even saw the petition that uh, Honorable Dr. Bed uh, Kimanya Kamone wrote mm -hmm. to the opposition chief, saying we need to know the position of the party on one, two, three. I think he gave about five key issues that he wants to know the position of the party on issues related to homosexuality. Because for him, he believes that the head of the political party, the principal, is having connections and is getting support from the gay people. Is it true? I don't know. I think when somebody petitions that it means, it's all about investigating and establishing the truth. So let's believe the truth will come out. But has Chagulani come out and pronounced himself about the issues related to homosexuality? Me and you, we know what I think has been said. Even the public knows whether it's true. He has come out to uh, give his position on this issue or not. There are even some members of parliament who think that when they were supporting this bill in parliament, that the party was against. Did the party come out to guide the members of parliament from no to say this is the position of the party or not? Because that's the importance of having these parliamentary caucuses. And you remember Chagwani's remarks on CNN? I remember all those. Because all those reasons were, have been given by Dr. Bediwanika. But I don't want to fault Chagwani. Because me, being a journalist, I'm telling you what I see. Mm -hmm. And what I believe in as a journalist. So I don't uh, say I'm supporting this section or this group or this group. No. But I'm telling you what the, the people say. Because most of the time, I'm with the people. Most of the time, I'm with him the members of parliament and some of them uh, sometimes you feel they feel they have been discriminated within the party some believe they have been cheated within the party because they believe whatever they are getting is being chopped off by the party what let me give you an example mm. now a no member of parliament contributes one million Ugandan shillings towards uh the party, the, the, party. the running of the party. The, the, the running of the party, or strengthening of the party. Mm. Now, there is a scenario that also needs to be investigated mm. as journalists and also you as politicians. It is alleged, and one of the staff in the office of the leader of the opposition told me that they are also being forced to pay 500,000 shillings towards that, some of the activities of the party. So they are contributing a Extra. monthly... A monthly contribution of, of 500. Million. These are staff within the office of the, uh, oh, the head of the opposition. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, the members of parliament are contributing 1 million, one million. and then the staff mm. within the office of the head of opposition, they are contributing 500. 500. They feel they're also being cheated. And to them, they think the money they're getting, uh, charging them 500 is too much. Because they're contributing, they're working. Even if it's the party that gave them the opportunity to work in parliament, but they also need to be considered that these people the employees of parliament right now. Now, let me get to the issue of the, the Mpuga. What's the likely and impact the, of his exit from the position the, the Mpuga, of the deputy? The commission of parliament. Yes. I don't want to say, but the commission of parliament right now, 
but I can send a commission of parliament. Because right now we know that it's still a commission of parliament if we are following the law. Because that's the, what the law says. Mm. But uh, uh, just allow me to inform the, our viewers, the audience. Now, a commission of parliament, how a commission of parliament is appointed, and the composition of the commission of parliament. Let me start with the commission of parliament, the composition. Now, it, it's, it's headed by the speaker, because the speaker is the chairperson of the parliamentary commission. Now, it is uh, the deputy speaker who becomes the vice chairperson of the parliamentary commission. And the members of that uh, commission we have the prime minister because the prime minister usually is the lead of the government business. So, mm -hmm. by virtue of the rules of procedure of parliament, he sits or she sits on the, the commission. commission. And even the deputy lead of government business, because right now we have the right honorable Banja, mm -hmm. uh, Robina, mm -hmm. then we also have the uh, General Mozesari, is the deputy lead of the government what? Mm -hmm. business. Honorable, right honorable Kadaga. Nakadama. Uh, Kadaga doesn't sit. She's, she exited. She's no longer on the commission. We have the uh, Nakadama, right on Nakadama. Mm. Is the third deputy prime minister. So all, the, the, one three, all in the three comprise the no, commission no, no. simultaneously? Nakadama comes in because mm. Moses Sal is in this post right now. Oh. That's why Nakadama is well sits in. To represent, mm. Mm. whenever the prime minister is not around, it's uh, mm. uh, on Nakadama that uh, sh sits in. Mm. But it, also, it, it was also a tag of war because previously it was... Uh, Lumumba was coming into city until when the Prime Minister wrote a letter to the Speaker and stopped uh, Lumumba said, Lumumba should no longer, should stop <laughs> representing government. Whenever, even if I'm not around, Nakadama should be the one to represent. Mm. Now, on that commission, there's the Minister of Finance. Mm. And we have the four bench commissioners, three from the ruling government and one from the from opposition. The opposition. Mm. So that's the composition of that. Uh, the, the commission, the parliamentary commission. Now, how do you uh, appoint a commissioner? A commissioner, the process of appointing a commissioner starts within the political party. So, for the NRM, they have their own way of presenting and coming up with names. Even when they were in Chankwas, they were proposing that it's better as members of the caucus of NRM, we should be given the opportunity to go sit and choose the commissioner that we are interested in, that we think are going to serve our purpose and our objective. Now, for the opposition, they generate a name, and that name is submitted to the speaker through the secretary general of that political party. So for this case, it's a no, that nominates a member. So the process starts within the political party, their neck and so on and so on, and then they come up with a name. So this name is presented, nominated, and communicated to the speaker. So the speaker, by virtue of the powers that are given to the speaker, presents this name. And say I received the following names for the, uh, for the position of commissioners. So and so and so and so for NRM. So and so for opposition. Usually there is one person from the opposition. So that name is presented to the to the, to the legislators in the House, parliamentary sitting. So it is members, the members of parliament who approve a commissioner. And once somebody has been approved, they can approve or disapprove. So they can accept the name or refuse to accept the name. Mm. So when they refuse the name, then it means it goes back to the party okay. to nominate another person. Mm. But when, when members of parliament okay that person, then it means he has been approved. And that name is gazetted as a commissioner. So now, the process of removing a commissioner is also tiresome. Mm -hmm. So you don't just sit and say, because I've got a disagreement with the commissioner Mpuga, now we're writing, we're withdrawing his name. After approval, I think we can withdraw that name before the name has been taken on the floor of parliament. But as long as the name has been taken on the floor of parliament, it has been approved by the majority of legislators, then it becomes hard. It's a process. It involves uh, going for a vote. Mm. A petition, a motion has to be moved, and a motion has to be signed, because right now we have 529 MPs. Now it has to be signed by 178 members of parliament. Cannot be in position to get all those names and to get all those signatures 
to side and say they are going to pass a vote of no confidence in Honorable Mpoga? Is it possible to get 178? Because right now, there are 57 no members of parliament. But not all of them are in support of what the headquarters is doing. Mm. Some are already in support of Mpoga. Some are in support of what the headquarters is doing. So they are already divided. You can, by the way, you may even get shocked that if that motion has been presented, you may not even get 20, I mean 20 signatures. From no? From no. Mm. From no. You never know, you may even get others from the other position, political parties like DP, UPC signing, appending in the center. Mm -hmm. But they're also very few. And I don't think they can even raise 50 signatures. So that points so to, they're moving a motion. It points to a lack of cohesion in no as a political party internally. Maybe, maybe. They have their own challenges. Mm -hmm. We should accept NUPA's challenges right now. But how are they going to sort out these challenges? Are the challenges going to be solved by attacking one another, blackmailing one another, or sitting as a, as sitting in a room, in a boardroom, as advised by the Katukil, uh, Katikil of Uganda? Mm. Or accepting that they need to buy their ego? Because right now, everyone wants to show off. <laughs> I was in a, a press conference, where Honorable Mpug addressed uh, the media at parliament. And he said, I'm not leaving the party. Mm. Hmm? That was on Tuesday. He said, I'm not leaving the party. Let's I'm going to stay within the party, be abused within Let's the party, and I'm going to make sure I bring order within the party. The Let's next day we are seeing Chagulani suspending him. When we return from the break. Viewers focus on parliament now takes a break. When we return from the break, we discuss the specific responses from the Speaker and the Honorable Poga regarding the issue of the Parliamentary Commission. See you shortly. Digital rights are those human rights and legal rights that allow individuals to access, use, create and publish digital media or to access and use computers, other electronic devices and telecommunication networks. Digital rights include a right to freedom of expression, information and communication through technology, a right to privacy and data protection, a right to credit for personal works, a right to universal and equal digital access, a right to identity, a right to anonymity, a right to be forgotten, and a right for protection of minors among others. The state's digital rights are frequently violated through various unfair actions, for example, blockage of websites and social networks, theft of credentials, unauthorized use of people's data for personal gain, privacy intrusion, online censorship, arrests and intimidation of online users, internet blockages, and a proliferation of laws and regulations that undermine the potential of technology to drive social, economic, and political development worldwide. It is hence every citizen's responsibility to respect rights of other digital users and to speak speak out or report to the responsible parties when one's rights are violated. Welcome back. This is the Focus on Parliament show on Civic Space TV. In this segment, we examine the implications of the responses of the specific players in this saga respecting the issues at the Parliamentary Commission. The Speaker and the Right Honorable Matthias Simpong have both come out to make communications regarding what their position is. Let me start with you, uh, Joseph. Yes, please. What have you got to uh, say about the communication by the Right Honorable Matthias Simpoga when he addressed a press conference in the course of the week that he's not leaving the national unity platform despite the vigorous protestations by the leadership and the other members who say he does not have the moral credibility uh, to continue representing them both at the level of the parliamentary commission, but also now, as we understand, he's been ejected from his office as the deputy president for the Uganda region. Is this tenable for a politician in a, 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 a region like Uganda that is politically volatile, which swept uh, it, it got the huge favor of, of, of NUP in the just concluded election. What is his future? Uh, thank you. I think that's a good question, and, and, and thank you for that. Um, when, when, I, when I watched the, the, the live press and 
uh, Honorable Matthias Mboga was, was firm on principle that uh, he was part of the foundation of the National Unity Platform and that he's not leaving. Uh, my heart first kept a bit uh, because that meant that he opted for the long fight with the party principle because he's the person that is leading the other fraction. And then, just a few moments later on Twitter, he posted the very statement he made on Twitter. And the last line, if anyone read it, had something like, I'll be telling you the next course of action in the near future. And that's why I wanted to concentrate. I think as, as a politician, when you get to the pinnacle of opposition politics, which could either be you leading a political party in a presidential election or being the leader of opposition, normally the next step for you is the obvious, which is either you lead that very political party or you become a candidate for office. So to him, the fight then represents, I think, his political aspiration as an individual, that as a man, I know I have been punched, and I know I'm on the floor, but I'm going to die trying. And I think that speaks to his political aspiration as, as a candidate, that, that he's interested in being on the pinnacle of opposition politics. So there could be two approaches. And you Just hold on. Is that an indication that he intends to rock the boat from within I, and therefore say it capsized? I, I don't think it's about the capsizing. I think it's about the hope that if someone is at the top of, or even like the second in command to someone, then they are like a candidate in waiting. So if they were a candidate in waiting and all of a sudden their status is moved to the most corrupt opposition politician, and then the political party is saying, do what they perceive as the right thing, resign and all that, I think there are two theories. One, they could, the other option could be they have put for you a squad and they are saying your only starvation is by lying on that squad. Because let, let's, let's all be realistic, right? The moment uh, uh, Honorable Matthias Mpuga chooses to, to make that political concession, then that would be the end of his political career. Now, the other option is him taking the best bet. There is a famous quote which says that self-defense is justified even when the risk of failure is very, very high. And I think since human beings inherently or just internally, intuitively, they are interested in their self-preservation, whether, uh, uh, wh whether they are in the opposition or elsewhere, mm -hmm. I think the option he has taken is, is, is an exercise in, in self-preservation. And th I think there is a chance of success, especially if we are to take on the political theory, which is that then he becomes like an alternative force within the national unity platform that is seen as the anti-radical wing of, of the National Unity Platform that is more interested in civil discourse than what I think other panelists have called uh, some erroneous and erroneous blackmail of whoever has disagreement with the party principle, and which I, which I think is a much better case for him at a level of just a, 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 a political science, that then he has a chance on one winning over people within the National Unity Platform who don't believe in like the radical side of it, yes, but also he has like the power of leaning over to other political parties like, uh, like, like DP uh, and, and other political parties that don't believe in the extreme version of politics, uh, politics and believe in civil discourse. And he also has like the power of leaning over to other political parties that believe in civil discourse as, 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 as the power, because I think he represents that. And from the very word go as I end, I think that's why Noop had a problem with it. They were saying guy is too diplomatic, uh, that he does not represent our kind of political style, that we need some, someone who is a bit, you know, more forthcoming with challenging power, turning tables around, yet for him he opted with, let's, you know, yes. hug the porcupine, as he said, let's engage, let's, let, 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 let's not play the politics of demons and saints, Let's sit on one table and engage and uh, perhaps uh, create a, a better hope that this project called Uganda is possible, even when we have various political opinions. 
Yes, that, that's where I stand. Helen, uh, what do you make of the response by the speaker by coming out strongly to intervene, so to say, on the Honorable Puga's side and actually reinforce his position as a commissioner on the parliamentary commission by saying, as uh, some here has correctly elaborated, that the law does not allow the party to take the unilateral decision to recall its member from the commission. But you sense from the, the tone and the diction of the letter that uh, it is some sort of rebuke uh, to the national unity platform that maybe they are overstepping their bounds, but also does it indicate some sort of understanding perhaps between let me, let, let me give you some information before it comes in. Mm. Now, the party can uh, withdraw a candidate through initiating a process, mm. a legal process. Mm. So as long as the process has been followed mm. up to the latter, then somebody can lose that position. Because you can initiate and say we are no longer interested in this person. What you then just move emotion. Yes. After moving emotion, get the necessary signatures. Mm. Necessary signatures go on the floor, and the vote mm. will remove a, a, a so, commission. <clears throat> what is clear from the uh, letter of the Secretary General of NOP, mm. in his letter he said, the Honorable Matthias Imponga no longer represents the interests of the party. And that position has been uh, validated by the Honorable Chagulani uh, in some of the interviews they have conducted in the wake of that saga by saying, even if he stays anyway, we already saw that coming because we know we are not in charge. Maybe these people can play their machinations and maintain him there. But he's no longer representative of Noob. So whatever he does, he does on the frolic of his own. So what, what do you make of this? What is it really going to happen practically? You have a commissioner from a party, but then he's going to make decisions that bind parliament, by extension the opposition, but the majority party Opposition party in parliament is saying, no, the decisions, we are not represented. What is happening is that, first of all, we must tell people that Mpuga is not a commissioner of NUP. Mpuga is a commissioner of parliament. If they are trying to say that he's no longer uh, addressing the interests of the party, mm. I would expect them actually to, to release a press or a letter that has even signatures of the members of parliament, of MPs, uh, of, 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 of NUP, signing the same. There we would say that they've exonerated themselves. Safe to say, just what my, my, my friend here, Sam, said, there are processes that they should have taken and removed the commissioner if they, they, they really felt they should uh, uh, pursue that. For me, I am still insisting that Perhaps on that they very issue, futile. On that very issue, mm. they're just pursuing politics. And you know, politics is a game of interest. Probably they looked at Ipuga and he had an interest, and Bobby also has his own interest. Not even Bobby or maybe any other party leader. You never know, it could, it could not even be uh, Bobby behind. You know, politics is, is just broad. For me, I believe that what the speaker wrote back is exactly what she's supposed to do. Recently, there was the same scenario from the FDC. They wanted to withdraw um, Honorable Semuju as a whip and mm. nominate in Ambeshe. The same letter was written to them. So how did they expect that they were going to be exonerated and even uh, treated, uh, be treated special, that for them it was going to just be a walkover like that? If you want they, to they pursue... They wanted to replace him with the Yusuf on Sibambi. Yes, with the Yusuf on Sibambi. Mm, Ambeshe has never Nambesha been is in FDC. Ambeshe is in UP, yes. Mm. So, I, I believe the same. They should have taken a thorough reading of parliamentary proceedings and the law and pursue that. And I actually believe that the, the actual political milestone they expected to have achieved, they would have actually achieved it very better and smart. Because there you will have known that I have 57 members, but these and these do not believe in this. But now it is looking to be like a battle between uh, the, the leader of NUP and the commissioner because the two, the, the two looks like there is one who is smarter than the other. Of course, we believe that there is always bad and worse. So when you do bad, of course, you'll be looked at so that you're good already. But the person who has done worse is actually worse. In this case, so, where is the, the bad, where is the worse? The, 
caught here and he's going to Salamu. Mm. The thing is, so we where, are where, where, is, where is the court here? <laughs> Because the audience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the one which decided on the presidential petition. petition. <laughs> but, uh, I saw the presidential <laughs> election <laughs> petition was sent there. Yeah, so but, but we are getting 2026 That's now. where we are sending the very... <laughs> we are yet to receive the judgment. <laughs> so we, we are yet to receive the verdict. <laughs> That's where we are sending the very thing. So for me, I believe that there are even better and smarter ways of doing politics. If they had followed properly these things, they would have achieved the smartest political game ever by pursuing the law properly, going into the floor of parliament, look for, for signatures, even if you, they got ten as, as of course we expect. They would have even gotten like five. But, but Helen, there are <laughs> practical <laughs> impediments <laughs> to the realization of uh, the goal of that process because mm. nope, much as it's a majority opposition party in parliament, mm. but it does not have the numerical strength to sustain the positive conclusion of that process to lead to the censure or recall of a commissioner from parliament. Perhaps in their assessment it was a process in futility, so they instead opted for, uh, you know, this... The very process they, 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 they pursued is also in futility. What, what has come out of it, because at the end of it all, they cannot withdraw Matthias. They have demonstrated that they have nothing the to do with the corrupt they should have done person. In parliament they and have actually, disassociated themselves with him. They should have actually done the same and pursue that very course and even disassociate. That would have, been, uh, that would have uh, looked a bit smarter and thorough. Another, another option they had was to pursue all the four commissioners who received the money by whatever means. They would have even written to NRM and received a and got it, actually, I'm sure they would have gotten a response from, 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 from the SG. Because really? Yes, they would have. Has would the have NRM taken any action? It cannot. The, it, it cannot. The, any, the, the other two? NRM it has its ways of handling their political problems. And trust me, it is one of the reasons they have really kept in power for long. It is very hard to hear about their internal conflicts. Even now they are there. Very many of them. That's why they are going to do re registration in May, because of the conflicts they have. But because they know how to manage their political internal conflicts, you will never hear about it then. For me, I believe that they should have actually pursued all the four commissioners. It would have looked better and not a witch hunt against an individual. Because, safe to say, he's already mentioned, they got to know about this in 2022. What have they been doing? 2023 came, passed. 2024, we had to first wait for the parliamentary exhibition on Twitter, and then they passed through. The same thing we are actually expecting them to do on their lead of opposition, because he went to visit Yo, to visit yeah. a CKMP in, in, in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. He signed a five, five, five days allowance, yet he was there for one day. We also expect, because if it wasn't for the noise on media, we wouldn't have really been gotten to know that he actually wrote back and withdrew the money. So the same process, had it been done on Matthias, Probably he would have also done the same and also written and they, they withdraw the money and maybe it is exonerated. But they chose. When wind comes, mm. it blows the everything that is around. So save for the for the strongest tree that it can stay standing. The wind that is in UP, is in NUP right now mm. requires a very strong tree to keep standing and we are watching up to 2026, which I'll see the strongest tree that is going to remain standing. But of course, the smartest will win this game. Mm. Because it is generally a, a, a game and a political game. Mm. Yes. Uh, Mr. Ivan, you in Parliament, let us understand what's the general feel, what's the mood there uh, in the wake uh, of this whole exhibition. Now, of course, we know the internal problems in NOPE uh, only an aspect uh, of this whole saga. But we have issues of accountability, we have issues of nepotism, we have issues of abuse of office. From your perspective, from the members of parliament themselves, what is their uh, you know, attitude towards all these issues? Because the, the citizenry is quite concerned. They feel like uh, there is a huge disconnect between parliament and then what they feel as, 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 as the population. And the expectation is the parliament should be the foremost voice of the citizens. 
it should be there to address their issues, promote issues, good governance, accountability. But from your perspective as a journalist in parliament, what is it that the, the institution's leadership is really, uh, you know, feeling or intending to do about this? I, I don't know what the leadership of parliament is feeling about uh, the public demanding them to provide accountability. I don't know. I, I think they have the platform and they have the capacity to be able to respond to that question. Because I don't want to speak for parliament. Parliament has a spokesperson, and that is Mr. Chris Oboli, my friend. But the principal spokesperson of parliament is the speaker and the deputy speaker. So uh, I remember last time when the speaker was chairing uh, the house, and the, uh, the leader of opposition and Honorable uh, Theodore Sechukubo, the two, that's the speaker to provide clarification on what's going on in the public concerning issues related to accountability. And she responded, she said, uh, she does not respond to the blackmail and the rumors, mm. and parliament cannot be run on rumor mongering. I think she gave a response. So that's my submission on that. So I know parliament has a fully fledged department that can speak on behalf of parliament. If the speaker is not there, then the commissioners can speak on behalf of parliament or the clerk of parliament or the spokesperson of parliament. So those are the people who can speak on behalf of parliament. I don't want to be quoted here and say the president of journalists in the parliament mm -hmm. said it is. I don't want. As a journalist, but, uh, have you been able to interact as, uh, with some of the members there uh, and to as, as, uh, obtain their personal views on this? Uh, on, 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 on the exhibition? Yes. Of course, that's why it went on the floor of parliament. And you saw the leader of opposition coming out, addressing the press conference and giving his position. You saw the Honorable Tinker Simili and the Honorable Theodore Sechup also holding a press conference over the same, and asking Parliament to provide an explanation, a clarification, because they were saying in the public, uh, the, 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 the voters are asking them to explain. So the best way of how the public can get on the truth is for them to ask their representatives on what is happening in the Parliament, because the members of Parliament will be in position to explain to them what the truth is. I'm not in the Commission, I'm not a staff of Parliament, I'm also a stranger in parliament because journalists are strangers in the parliament. So I don't want to deceive you that I know you are our the truth and the what. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mm. Let, let, let me tell you that. You, you know, sometimes people, I even saw my friend Dr. Spire roasting me and roasting my journalists on social media, saying that journalists in the parliament have been compromised by the speaker. Is it true? I'm their leader. Have I been compromised? And how much was I compromised, uh, the speaker compromised me with? That's the question I'm asking, because th those are the ones now putting the allegations. So I cannot also depend on rumors and say uh, we are compromised. No way. No way. And the, you, you know, they were also quoting the 60 million Ugandan shillings that the journalists in the parliament were given 60 million shillings by the speaker. And good enough, they were saying I was given. So I'm here. Personally. And I want to tell you, I've, I've not received even a single coin from the speaker. Even the 60 million they're talking about, I don't know it. Maybe they, they, they could have even quoted the 50 million that we were promised mm. as journalists, but not 60. Have you now received we are saying, 50? Listen. Now you are saying we are given 60 million. Mm. You are quoting even a wrong figure. What is your source of the 60 million? Can you provide an explanation of your source? Leave the source and then we get to know. The source who gave you the information of the six I test them on social media also. Give me the evidence that shows I, I received the 60 million. Now, they couldn't even give me any receipt or where I signed that I received the what? The 60, 60 million. million. No way. Now, they talk about the 50 that was promised to the UPPSAP. We have not even received that money. The 50 million. We have promised this money, but we have not received it. But we think. 
and we have the hope that one day, one time, we shall receive the money. And we're still waiting for it. If the 50 million comes, I will receive it with the two hands. You know why? We need to also empower the generous. People think generous are supposed to be poor. That's the, 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 the perception among these people. People think generous are not supposed to receive money. They have families. And they think, by the way, I'm also I'm only against a general receiving a bribe to kill a story. I'm only against a genius being compromised to kill a story. Principally. So the principles of taking, I mean, the, 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 the ethics, our ethics as journalists, you know that, that we are not supposed to be compromised either to kill a story. But give me an evidence where you can say journalists of parliament have been compromised to kill, I mean, to kill such a story. Perhaps no way. some. The frustration mm. is partly because the public feels you as their listening posts mm. in parliament mm. and their watchdog in parliament, you've not done enough to highlight some of these wrongs and you've waited for the people on social media, mm -hmm. some of whom are not even professional journalists, mm -hmm. to break these stories that pertain to uh, the real issues that affect and, uh, the citizen. Uh, let, me, let me tell you and, that. And in the wake of that, let me tell you that. your reaction is silence again. You, you know I like debate. And, and through this debate, we get to know the facts. That's the most important thing. I'm ever against people on social media abusing people. Because whenever you're giving information, now people come and start abusing you. Now, will you also get the moral and say, let me continue now giving them the information? So me, I had an interaction, a real interaction. Others even wrote about it and said it's a battle between uh, Eva and Amogavi of UPP and Dr. Supai of Makere University. I said, no, it's not about the two of us. But it's also, it's also it's about getting to the truth. And if I'm giving information and then you start abusing me, do you think I'll continue giving you the information that you're interested in? Because you want the facts. Let me give you the facts. But I'm giving you the facts now, you are abusing me. I'm saying you have never received the 60 million. And nobody that speak has never promised the 60 million. Now you just abuse me. Do you think I'll also continue giving you facts? So I also say, let me be silent, because I don't want to debate with weak minds. Weak minds are the ones that are abusing people. Why do you abuse people? Debate, give your argument, submit, in a way of giving one another respect. Now, the one you are saying, why are we failing, and then it's the public that is, is giving out the what? Coming out to, to give out uh, this, uh, the so-called rumors, the way the speaker called it. Agath is my friend. But I worked with Agath. Mm. Uh, uh, at Next Media. Uh. I was with Agatha in Parliament. She left the Parliament. So if she was in the Parliament, why didn't she publish those stories? While she was still she in She was in Parliament. parliament. Mm. Eh? Mm. I don't know. I think people leave Parliament depending on the, 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 the policies of their media houses. When? Because for... I... I, I, I think I don't remember the exact amount, but she was there. She was reporting from there. But I don't want to, rem I, I don't recall the exact amount, but she was in the parliament. So it's after leaving the parliament, that's when she started publishing this work, these dossiers and so on, about oh. parliament and so on. And two, let me tell you, you're so generous. Do you know that uh, there is information that somebody can trust to give me and then doesn't trust you as I to give you? Do you know that? It's possible. It is possible. Mm. So maybe there is some confidential information that they trusted Agatha with, and they never trusted Jonas within parliament. Because these are minutes of the commission. Not everyone is privy to these minutes. Now, who was getting these minutes, leaking out these minutes to Agatha and Spire? Who? You are here, working here. Do you want to tell me that you are you, you, you know everything, what the management, uh, because you ever, almost every month, or week, the management sits. So are you privy to, to all the minutes of the management? That's not my jurisdiction. My, I, I'm my just job. asking you. <laughs> eh? <laughs> I'm just asking, are you privy? <laughs> of course, of course not, no. Because it's not so, under my purview. So in case somebody from within the management mm. leaks that information, do you think can leak that information to each and every person? 
because he doesn't trust each and every person. So could be trusting Isaac, and that's the, the reason why he's leaking that information to Isaac. Could be the reason. And two, let me tell you, that even the person who's leaking this information is not stupid to say he's going to trust all the journalists. No way. Cannot trust everyone. Because they know once it gives out this information to all the journalists, then you know that to come. Uh. So you only get one person, the one you can trust, give the information, and then knowing that will protect you, the person is leaking the information. Uh. So there is a, this is not a press conference that somebody is going to come, sit with a document, and then start doing what? Saying the speaker used this. The speaker gave journalists this man, which is not even there. Uh. But uh, most importantly, all of us believe Parliament is a platform that uh, members of Parliament are used to voice the concerns of the people. Even me, I'm not in support of seeing, if it's so, seeing the taxpayers' money being misappropriated. I'm not in support because I'm also a taxpayer. I have a family. I also go to the hospital. I want better medical health services. I want better education for my children. Even if I have a master's, but I also have brothers who are unemployed. We need to see people in a country where somebody can get a job on merit. I also believe in that. So I don't want to say to exonerate uh, uh, parliament, but I've already told you, parliament as a spokesperson. And uh, I believe they have done an explanation. I believe where they have been weak in providing an explanation, they have reasons why. You know, in communication, you, you have to be with strategies of how to communicate, what to communicate, when to communicate, where to communicate, and what to communicate. Sam, in a minute, even as we conclude, I want to pick your views on the proposal to cut the budget of parliament by 50%. And this is, uh, you know, <clears throat> something that has provoked <laughs> the rank and eye of the speaker we saw her yesterday. Mm -hmm. Vigorously protest and say, no, does this even mean uh, some of our salaries might get affected? What, what's your view on that? The, pers the perception among the public is that people think uh, the position of Minister of Finance to reduce the parliament budget by 50% is because of the, 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 these events that have been happening in the parliament. The alleged corruption, abuse of public that's what the, That's what the public thinks. Mm. But uh, as a journalist, I don't think so. What could be the actual motivation, you, you know, you think? the budgeting process changed. Now, when the budget process, I mean budget process changed, because we're still in budgeting, Mm. Means of finance has not touched the budget, the budget of parliament for this current financial 2023-2024. Now we are just in budget estimates. Mm -hmm. Now you start with uh, presenting the budget framework paper. Now from the budget framework paper, now you present the budget estimates. Because the final budget will be presented. Now we are in the second phase where ministries and different government entities are presenting their budget estimates for 2024-2025. So currently, they're presenting the uh, budget estimates. Now, within the budget estimates, they say, for you present your budget framework paper, and you say we shall require 900 billion, 960 something billion as parliament. Mm -hmm. Now, Minister of Finance comes out and say, we are requesting you during the second phase of the budgeting, and say so we shall provide you with 450 billion. So it means they have cut your budget to half, 50%. Mm. Mm. Now, they are advising that it's better because of the resource envelope we're having, budget within the means of 450. I, I don't know whether you're getting me. Mm. Now, if the, let me give you a good example. Now, the Electoral Commission presented a budget estimate of 1.1 trillion ahead of the next general elections. Now, Minister of Finance is saying you need to budget within 150 billion. Now, is it, what percentage is that? So, parliament is quiet. Mm. They're saying 
they budgeted for 900. Now they're giving them 450. Electoral Commission budgeted for 100.1 trillion. They've been given on 50 billion. Mm. There is hope that when resources are realized, they, uh, they, they will be, they, be released to these entities. So they will but supplement. currently we are just in the sort second phase. Supplement. But the final budget is mm. going to come and it is parliament with the powers to appropriate by law. Yes. Yesterday there was a serious debate when the PSST appeared on one of the media houses and also before one of the committees, that is the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament. And they, 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 were, they was faulting parliament. And the members of parliament said, the PSST, Mr. Ramazan Gobi, is saying, as parliament, you don't have the powers to appropriate, so it's the executive because the executive knows the priority of the, the, its citizens and so on. So they were getting tough. But all of us, we know the functions of parliament. That one of the functions of parliament is appropriation. Legislation is there and so on. So, all, all in all, I don't think whether members of parliament need to start crying. They have the powers to appropriate. However, to me, I believe we need an amendment in the law. And that's why we also need an establishment of the Saturday Review Board or Commission. Because now, even if you tell me I'm here and I'm the one now deciding on the remunerations that I'm supposed to get, the mm -hmm. salaries, the fuels, and so on, do you think I'll, 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 I'll start getting one million? Yeah. It becomes that I also give the, what I think is enough for me. Mm. Mr. So, Sam, your closing remarks on the program. I want to thank you for this mm. opportunity. Uh, this world needs all of us to be patient. And you have not all lost the hope. Let political parties uh, engage. Let the leaders of different political parties engage. I don't think it's only leaders within the national interplatform platforms that need to engage. But you go to DP, the sections of people where my sister comes from. You do see that sometimes Mao takes time without even sitting with his fellow uh, with the, the, the MPs that are from DP. Every time and then you'll see Sabamala, Dr. Lume, Vaiga, the Lumos and all that also fighting Mao. But let them sit and engage. Let FDC sit and engage. Let National Unity Platform sit and engage. NLM and other political parties. That's the way to go. Go to UPC, there are two factions. Today, you will see the faction of Peter Olivia and the faction of Jim Akin and so And you question whether this is true, the true democracy or we are the leaders of these political parties that have their personal selfish interest. As a graduate of peace and conflict studies, I want to say it's high time for all these entities, even government, to establish a desk, employ people who are experts in peace and conflict studies. Why? We should accept that conflicts are there and conflicts are going to be there. But they need experts who will sit and listen and solve and guide in a technical way on how to sort out these conflicts. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, for joining us. And uh, I right. want to say a happy Easter to all the believers and wish you nice celebration to all of you. Thank you, Sam. Helen. Your closing remarks, but I want you to particularly react to the proposal to slash the parliamentary budget by half. The MPs have really been over -comfortable. I believe that that budget cut, if it is real and it's going to happen, because they have the powers actually to refuse. When, when uh, they are approving, they can choose not to. I believe that maybe it will make them discomfortable this time around if that budget can actually be cut and channeled to social services because services around the country have really been uh, not pleasing enough. When you look at roads, the hospitals, infrastructure, schools, they are all really not doing well. Maybe they will be uncomfortable and then focus if, if those can be, uh, the budget can really be cut. The travels at Parliament are too much and exorbitant. So if it, those can be cut and then we send that money to social services, 
for me as a lay person, it can really work for me. And um, to our viewers, thank you for sparing your time to watch us. We wish you the best of, of the Easter season and may the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ really be a blessing to all of us. And uh, may it uh, bring uh, yields, may, we, may it bring more harvests. And to our political parties, I, need, I think we need uh, new, new modes on how we can engage and solve our problems internally, as we have said. Of course, they're everywhere because politics is about interest. And where there are interests, there is always conflict of interest. So I think we need to, to learn how to deal with our conflicts of interest and uh, most importantly focus them on what benefits a Ugandan because it should be for the interest of Ugandans and for Uganda. I thank you so much. Thank you, Helen, for joining us. Joseph, your closing remarks on the program, but also particularly I will ask you to react to that proposal to have the parliamentary budget halved. Oh, th th thank you. So on, on, the, on the proposal by uh, Honorable Ramadan Gobi, of the parliament budget, I, I think I see it as like a red herring, more or less like tell the child, um, if you touch that pan, you're, you're going to be banned, like a check and balance the parliament by the executive. But I, I don't think they would actually do it. But sometimes you scare a child that, please, uh, I'm going to do this action if you, <laughs> and, and then perhaps then they are on their toys. So I, I, I see it as like really politics. As, and I think it was quite strategic rather than uh, going to NBS and having that po polit politicking and, and then parliament now. And then the next day, it's the headline on every newspaper. And then, of course, the government led by M7 is now going to have the political credit that they are checking parliament. Again, red herring, post sharing. But again, if it can keep these parliamentarians on their toys, that even when they are earning these millions, these millions need some level of accountability. There's like a political outcome there. It's not so strong, but it is there. And if it favors the one who is doing it, the better. But then also, I think fundamentally, secondly, I think most people uh, tend to think Museveni didn't know what he was doing by expanding the size of parliament and feeding those who are now in this expanded parliament. I think he was just really... Uh, uh, not knowing what he was doing. I think he knew and exactly what he was doing. The nature of African democracy is that we are of different ethnicities and different interests. And the truth is that you can't survive without appealing to all these political interests. And more, more often than not, the appealing is through ensuring that they all have like a piece of, of the cream on the national cake. And, and uh, uh, the parliament is like one sharing space where everyone is looking for, for, for their peace. So uh, to him, it, it's his way of reaching out to everyone, uh, especially within the context of African democracy. I now enter my parting shots. So I think we, we, need to, um, we need to nurture a culture of tolerance and building up on, on, on your argument around peace. The nature of extremism is that it is nurtured if there is no tolerance. Now, you don't tolerate someone whom you agree with. You actually tolerate someone whom you don't agree with. And fundamentally, someone whom you actually have sharp, diversing view with, they are sharp, right? Let's say you, you believe in democracy, the one and believes in benevolent dictatorship. You are the kind of people who need to constantly work on your disagreements. Because if those disagreements cannot be very well managed, then they lead to polarization. And that polarization leads to extremism because the polarization leads to the political culture we are seeing now of insults of blackmail because it's more or less like enemy, enemy fighting enemy. And before you know it, we will have an entirely divided political class which can't speak with each other, which can only speak with each other through insults. And that world is not good. And maybe as I close, there are so many examples of political societies that have collapsed because of this. We saw how America reacted to 9-11 in the Middle East, and that gave birth to terrorist groups, that gave birth to political factions, which even up to like the seventh generation of people in the Middle East, they will still be against the United States of America. Because 
they could not manage the disagreements that they were having at the time. So my parting shots is, it's true, we can all have differing political opinions, but at least we should, at least in such spaces where we can still talk. Talking is very, very, very important if we are to still have a society called Uganda. Thank you so much for hosting me. Thank you, Joseph, Helen, and Sam, for your able participation on this program, and of course for uh, the patriotic guidance that you've offered to the general citizen out there. Once again, our viewers, we appreciate you for keeping us company from the start of this program up to its conclusion. This is the Focus on Parliament show on Civic Space TV. Engage us on our various social media platforms. We are on X, we are on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And many thanks to the production unit for keeping us live on air. We'll see you next time. Happy Easter.